Hey there, this is one up Indie here coming with another advanced Game Maker Studio tutorial about texture page optimization. So basically you're optimizing your graphical output on the screen. So this is not for you guys which are in the very beginning of their production phase and therefore you can more, more likely just skip on this part. And of course for you guys which are having I don't know, a very low resolution graphics, then this stuff doesn't need to be bothering you a lot because your game will run smoothly. Anyway, this is then uh, rather for advanced users and people who just want to cram out a few frames per second uh, from their game. And of course, uh, some explanations what to do and what not. So if you want to join me on this journey, then stick around. This is OneUp Indie. I am a developer, so if you like what you're seeing and hearing, then why not consider sharing, liking and subscribing to the channel, of course. So one thing, for example, what is the cheap man's way, how to read out how good your performance is, for example, is this little thing which is called show debug overlay and then switch it to one, just cram it to one of those create events so it well, it's flagged once and then you will see uh, this yellow reddish thing which is just showing memory usage and then the next thing is the frames per second reel so you can of course read them out manually if you like but this is then a neat thing and then the next number is your texture swaps so texture swaps is basically how many texture page swaps you are having in game per step and that is kind of significant so the lower that is the better it is for the game and of course this results in better frames per second. So once again, very, very quickly, what is the texture page? So basically texture page is all the graphics together, just crammed together in multiple, or if you are lucky into one uh, big PNG, and then the, it, it, it is being just read out. So for example, the graphics pipeline, game maker is just saying like, hey, uh, I need the mummy, and then I need the, I don't know, the grass thing and the sand uh, images, and then it's just reading uh, those portions out. And then from the texture page, it's just cutting it out, dumping into the graphics card, and the graphics card is putting it into a blender, and then voila, you got your image on the screen and therefore it makes sense to have as li sm little as uh, possible texture swaps all together. So how can we do this? So the first thing is for options, in, you can leave that on if you like. It's not too terribly important for most people, but of course, let's say you got the Windows um, uh, output, so basically you wanna go on Steam or whatever, and then you can first of all get your preview. I already showed that in my texture page tutorial which I already did so I'm not going to repeat that here and then you got you can uh, get your texture page sizes that is a little bit misleading because it doesn't mean for example let's say you're just having one graphics and then the rest is free but you have um, every texture page is like this big no it just means that is the maximum one and game maker is kind of cutting out small texture pages so they could be different kind of sizes of so 512 or 127 29 whatever by something something because it tries to cram in it, it uh, all this stuff as efficiently as possible so here this is just the maximum so why is there a distinction here well kind of easy because let's say you're having high definition images then it means like hey for example, let's say you have got an 8K image in there, which is kind of ridiculous, then it will cut the image into two parts and then put them into two different separate um, well, texture pages and therefore you would have a texture swap between those two all the time, which is of course then not an optimal way to handle that. So a pretty good thing is, I don't know, be, be go between those two here and then it is good. You can even go into more ridiculous sizes. So for example, Opera GX allows actually, this is, kind of huge to be honest so if you go graphics and then la 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 what <laughs> 16k that's just gigantic that is just huge of course most people won't be using that that's it's completely pointless and the other thing is the larger the texture page can be then of course the size of one texture page is bigger so once again you need to find the sweet spot between uh, not too many texture swaps and not too big texture pages this is this is very very fundamental to understand in here so for example let's say 
uh, I actually wrote that down. So for example, if you got a neat little image, which is, I don't know, um, the 2048. So basically uh, this is the, the small texture page. So this one here, then for example, a maximum uh, image, image would be like eight megabytes. And then for example, if you go uh, 4K, so double, then you already go into the territories, which are what, what was it, 80 or 19 megabytes sometimes. So it could be huger. And then if you go the ridiculous Opera GX style, uh, 16K texture page, then you can go to half a gigabyte. That's quite huge. Don't do that. So 500, what was it? 512 megabyte of an image. <laughs> That's a lot. So once again, we don't want that. So what do you do? Well, first of all, you have your sprites and then you divide them into different kind of groups, which make sense in the thing. So let's say we got, uh, no, you're not good. Let's go into, let's go into the assassin. And as you can see, she got tons of free space and then what you this is an, uh, important for later then you just go and texture group and assign it to one so where do you find the texture group so once again under tools so if you watch the other video link in description once again texture groups and then you can add new ones and then you can assign first of all you just got your default but if you add new ones then you can separate them and this is for example making sense so let's say i've got beyond one to eight and this is just for the level so for example five one is i guess this is the desert level and then everything which is concerning your desert level is put into this texture group so let's say and what kind of level are we so basically we're just reading out from texture page five uh, of the beyond five so for example it would make no sense to have a texture group which is, let's say, in having all the biomes and all the level and everything into one thing cramped because you are wasting texture swaps because there will be more uh, texture swaps because of that. And therefore, it, would, it makes sense to separate, let's say, your UI elements, your enemies, and maybe even your levels. Levels, I would make sense, it makes the most sense to separate that into texture groups because then they don't need to be read out and they are just read out by demand this is kind of important to understand and your texture groups are not just containing your sprites they are already co also containing your um your fonts so for example here you have group and then for example you can actually assign it to your texture group also so once again those two things are uh, stuck on that one so kind of important to understand so let's go back to the texture group and then a few settings just quickly on the fly what they mean and what you can do so once again separate them into logical groups which makes sense of example ones for cutscene ones for user interface ones for the player ones for enemies and so on and then um, you got those settings so for example allow scaling just just means like hey um, can we as far as I understand is can we slash down the texture groups into smaller ones so basically you don't have all the time the all the same size so basically this just means like hey this is then important for example for iOS that you have texture pages with tons of free uh, space but iOS kind of demands that so therefore it would make sense for mobile so especially for, for the Mac Apple users to switch that off because this is uh, set on default but allow scaling is i guess better for everybody so i would leave that on then automatically crop this is kind of important because let's go back in here here we got tons of free space and automatically crop is just meaning like hey it will just cut out this piece which is needed so where some graphical information is so a rectangle and then dumping that on the texture page and all the free stuff is not being uh, put in there you can if you like disable that or disable that on each sprite if you like but i would just leave it on because it is kind of uh, okay in this kind of regard and of course each sprite on the texture page has a border to the next one and this is defined but this value two pixels is good enough because there is no bleed over but of course if you're thinking there should there is be there should be or then you can cramp up that number here so this is what it means Generate mid-maps, this is for 3D, so this is as far as I know, um, uh, having or saving different texture pages and they are scaled into multiple resolutions. This is good for 3D, 
which we don't do so basically you can completely skip on that and then you can kind of group texture groups uh, oh yes those texture groups into bigger groups so you can have it like inheritance we can completely forget that of course you can do that if you like this then personal but I just have I don't know this many texture groups so it's completely fine here and then the next thing this is for compression later on um, this is the standard default one so the bz2 or q or y format compression whatever and this is working pretty fine but of course if you want to go for the faster performance as far as i know this version is then better for android or for uh, ios but of course it can have some issues with your graphical fidelity so basically this is not always good so therefore just go with the, with the standard here or for example if you go with png this is the most consuming format so once again do you need to do this well if you're having a very small game which is uh, having just tiny little graphics and this is you don't have like i don't know i'm, I'm, I'm around 140 megabytes which is not too much to be honest but still if you're having just small little things and you don't have a few thousand instances then you can completely skip on that because um, game maker will handle everything for you pretty sweetly so this is once again for guys which are want to optimize and give a small little turbo to the game so let's actually go in here and why is that showing it doesn't really matter so here i had huge spikes between um i don't know 20 uh, swaps to 70 to 80 which is of course not great for a game where you have tons of things on the screen so optimization in on such games is critical and therefore i had to optimize it basically i just put the sprites into different kind of groups and that was the whole work so yay me this is good for your advanced dudes or dudettes where you think like hey i want to have optimization and therefore how can i do this so once again sprites and fonts put them into the, their respective folders so you have as minimum as po possible swaps which are being read out but once but to come back to that don't make the texture pages too big because then maybe you have small little texture page swaps because they're cramming more into uh, one uh, texture page but then maybe they are too heavy too big and therefore reading out of them will be clunky also but i would say um, the standard or the 4k texture page format is good enough for i don't know 95 percent of the games please don't quote me on that i guess that's completely made up from my side <laughs> Alrighty, that was it from my side have a good one one up indie